welcome back. Happy New Year. A little a little delayed, uh, but we're back here at Content is for Closers. Carlton, the people, I've been getting tweets left and right. Where's Carlton? What's going on? Do you have him in a hole? A little concern for you. Uh, so t- tell us how you're doing. Happy New Year. Man, if, if people were tweeting about me, I feel um, my... Self-esteem has just risen three points. So that's it's all the content. Uh, no, we're doing good over here. Um, you know, just hunkering down for the winter for the Omicron mm. season, um, and uh, trying to stay stay healthy. How about you guys? Yeah, it's been good. So we are obviously back with with our new uh, kind of cadence. We'll be back with our weekly episodes now. Um, one note I should say is that we won't be doing the typical content snacks episodes that uh, we were doing at the for most of you know that back half of last year. Um, I did get a lot of good feedback on those. I'm thankful for that. But we are going to fold in a new episode type. And Carlton, why don't you talk a little bit about that um, for? Yeah, so we we just had so much content that we wanted to bring to you guys for Have You Heard that we couldn't keep it to just one thing in episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this short and sweet for these interview episodes so that uh, you guys can hear what you came for. And uh, and then we'll just do a separate breakout episode uh, once a month or something like that that we'll dive more into uh, just things that we're hearing, uh, maybe trends in the industry, uh, as well as some, some things that uh, Adam would have... Uh, previously done in those snack episodes. So he'll still be bringing the food just uh, in, in larger meals than snacks. Yeah. Speaking of relevant news and people eating, uh, today's guest, Ruben Harris, fresh off a $40 million Series B raise. You've heard the episode. What what stuck out to you or what do you think people should uh, specifically listen for? Yeah. So it's awesome because he started in content before he started mm. his business. And he, you know, he really like was building in public before people were, were doing that. And so he had a lot of really great, uh, you know, advisors and people that he was talking to, but it started from this place of discovering their industry through content. And so, you know, even now they're still pumping out a lot of content and he talked a lot about, it's just bringing it with who they are and bringing it with simplicity Mm -hmm. and not trying to overcomplicate it and be someone they're not. So it's a, it's a great episode. He really shares his heart behind why he does what he does. Uh, and so it's it's a great episode for for several reasons, but specifically when it comes to content, um, it's just neat that he's create you know they started creating and they're still creating. Yeah, and I would just add to I really appreciate uh, Ruben and his commitment. We scheduled this back in November, I think, uh, and it just ended up coinciding with the announcement of his Series B the same week. He easily could have uh, pushed it and never even showed a, a, a hint of that. So really appreciate it. Think you all will enjoy it. Let's get into this conversation with Ruben Harris. Our guest today is an entrepreneur fresh off a $40 million Series B raise. That is Ruben Harris, CEO of Career Karma. Ruben and Career Karma help job training programs find qualified applicants, and they have the huge mission to help 1 billion people find careers. Now, Ruben's been at the helm of a rocket ship since going through Y Combinator and and raising a Series A and B, but today's episode, he shares how he and his co-founders started Career Karma which was originally born out of a podcast. Oh, you guys know I'm not going to shut up about that. They started a podcast, got the momentum rolling, built a content and an audience, and then built a company out of it. We talked about how the Breaking Into Startups pod launched their business, what it looks like to empower people who don't look like the status quo to be able to command the careers they deserve, and where he has found the most fulfillment in his journey so far. Ruben has been nothing but kind, generous, and inspiring in the little time I've gotten to know him. So I'm so excited for you to hear him yourselves. Let's get into it with Ruben Harris. All right, we got Ruben Harris here, CEO of Career Karma, on the show with us. Ruben, fresh off the slopes, and more importantly, fresh off uh, Series B, $40, 40000000 million raise. Is that right? That's correct, man. People putting that dry powder to work. <laughs> Pun intended. Congrats. I, I, before we go too deep, I gotta say congrats, obviously. And what what did it what did it feel like when you saw that wire come through or the email or whatever that, that notified you? What was the first feeling you had with it? I felt good. It felt it felt good to to be in a position where um, capital is not our biggest concern, um, and we mm-hmm. can focus on solving problems to help people at scale. 
And it also felt good to know that the capital came from impact oriented people that can fund us all the way to IPO. So we don't really, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like that's not our, our main stressor. So yeah. So like ref- a little bit of relief maybe and some, some freeing feelings to, to just be able to go after it now. Yeah. I mean, like I, we've been pretty intentional about like raising capital from investors that can fund us all the way to IPO. Um, mm-hmm. I think this was validation that they can, right? Cause most of the people that gave us capital um, were internal investors or related to our internal investors, like the people that led our series B or our LPs and initialized capital. So it's all in the family. So it's like really cool mm-hmm. to be able to like continue growing from within um, the people that we are. It's kind of like promoting someone from within or like growing, growing the internal team. Um, yeah. And the reason why I like it, it's, it's relevant is when you think about the demographic that we serve in career karma that are trying to break into tech um, a big challenge that they have is living day to day and living check to check and not even having that time to think creatively. And so this makes me more fired up to be able to put more people in a position where they don't have to worry about living check to check and they can just focus on solving the problems or, or getting closer to their purpose that, that they want to solve in life and being an example to their kids and building legacy. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome what you guys are doing. Awesome the goals that you have. I see you you talking about having uh, the ambition to help a billion people. And obviously, when you have that sort of ambition, there's something there's something in there deeper than like money or trying to raise a certain round or anything like that. And um, have you ever heard of the book Wanting by Luke Sturgis? Nope, but I'm Luke about Sturgis. to get down. Wanting by yeah, Luke Sturgis. Luke Sturgis. I'm sorry. Yeah, check it out. It's about the idea of mimetic desire and why, like, why we want things, how we, and uh, I, I, listening to Twitter, your Twitter Spaces last week, it just triggered in my head, like, oh, he has something deeper that he's he wants. It's not about the headline. It's not about because most of the time, you, you're going about it not necessarily the fastest way by being so careful with who you take money from and all those sorts of things. So um, there's an intentionality there. And I guess I was curious around in the last, how long have you been doing career karma? Five years, six years? No, about three years. We started. uh, Oh, three years. uh, 2018. Wow. So in the last three years, is there like a, an experience or an achievement outside of this raise where you felt truly fulfilled in, in what you're doing and in the mission that you're pursuing? That's a weird question, but <laughs> no, no, that's a good question. I, I'm glad that, um, that what's shining through when people view us externally, um, that they know that what we're doing is bigger than money. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, you touched on why, our, why is our ambition a billion people, um, at least and part of the reason for that is because that's the size of the problem, right? There's no bigger problem outside of healthcare than helping millions and billions of people get on their feet. And and we truly want to solve this problem. We truly want to create a, a platform that helps people navigate their careers, no matter what point of time that we're in. Um, and uh, when it comes to um, what makes me feel fulfilled, um, on a day to day basis is just seeing people get jobs or seeing people be able mm-hmm. to provide for their families. Now, before we started CareerCom, we started a, a podcast called Breaking Into Startups, uh, where we share stories of people that got jobs in tech. And you were in that Twitter spaces last week where, you know, I'm not telling people what CareerCom does anymore. The people themselves are talking about it. So you saw. Mm-hmm people that are in the career comma community join that space to talk about how career comma is changing their life and how they are dedicating themselves to giving back, spreading good career karma and helping other people achieve what they've been able to accomplish and, and honestly to become better than they are. This, this is a, uh, you know, people talk about compounding a lot from a capital perspective, but relationships mm-hmm. compound as well. Like I want people to be greater than who I am. And I, I truly believe I've been put in this position to um, short circuit the time that it takes for someone to get to the point that it, 
that I've been able to get to, kind of like what a book does, like you were mentioning this book, that book saves mm-hmm. years of time that, you know, some people got to develop through experience, but like I can give people my connections today. I give people the, the insights today. I can give people the access to the companies today so that they can be better and do it for others. You know? Yeah, I love that. The Twitter spaces, I don't know if that's even, I'll try to find that and if we can link that in the show notes below. I jumped on it because I knew we were going to have this conversation and it was crazy because obviously you talked a little bit about the things, you know, you'd expect people to ask about, but then person after person, like you said, kind of just came on stage in the space and talked about the the impact that you've had and um, diff- the different things that they've received from it. So it'd be anybody who's listening would be interested in that. I'll try to link that below. You, you mentioned breaking into startups. I, that started, uh, that was your podcast, right? Or is your podcast. I, you, I don't, are you still uh, doing episodes for that? We still have the podcast. We still are in a position where we can drop episodes. Um, the last episode that we did was with the CEO of SoftBank when we raised our Series A. We haven't dropped an episode since then. However, um, since we launched Live Audio Rooms inside of Career Karma, we've mm-hmm. done more rooms than we've done podcasts. So Whenever we launch recording, then we'll be able to do interesting things with the podcast again. That's nice, cool. aligned and consistent with the work that we do on a day-to-day basis. Got it. Well, so you started that though a couple of years, right? Before Career Karma or a, a while before years. it. Seemed. Yeah, twenty six. Yeah. We launched 2016, yeah. Was that intentional? Did you know that was going to be a forerunner to a, to a company you were eventually going to launch? Or was it just something like, talk about how that onboarded you and kind of paved the way for what you eventually did in in launching the business? It was not intentional to become a business. Um, It was intentional from a documenting of the journey perspective. Um, I remember when my co-founders, our turn team, or Meister, they were going through their boot camps, um, App Academy and Hack Reactor, and how challenging it was for them, not technically really, but more psychologically. Um, And how we really had to pump each other up and, you know, they would listen to music or work out or talk to somebody that could encourage them. And they would always get pumped up when they would he- read a story that somebody blogged about related to mm-hmm. getting a job in tech. And we're like, man, how awesome if you could, would it be if you could just get daily motivation of somebody else that got a job in tech to validate that you are on the right path. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it just started off as a as a love project. Um, and then once, you know, started taking off, school started reaching out saying, hey, man, you guys got a big audience for the people we're trying to reach. We'd love to pay you to get access to your audience. And we're like, oh, well, like, is this a thing? Do, do, do schools do this? And that's when we realized that schools are kind of like startups as well and corporations as well, where there's thousands of schools that teach the same thing, but they have their own way of teaching it. And so in order Mm -hmm. to differentiate themselves, they spend money on, on marketing, kind of like how a startup does to, to reach the right users. Um, And they leverage not just Google and Facebook, they leverage uh, different uh, platforms from a lead generation perspective. But what they realize is that lead generation is not enough in order to get people to make a life changing decision. So you need, community and human beings to speak with these individuals even after you serve them the best recommendations that they can trust and even after you um connect them to the right schools and the right people they they have to um they have to make the decision um by talking to people that have gone through it before so you did that you started having these conversations with folks given that free advice out, you know, then connecting people with schools, et cetera. And then how did that eventually transition to, we're not working with other schools, we're going to build our own, uh, well, we are working with schools, but we're going to build our own platform to to make those connections. Um, That came through encouragement from Michael Seibel, uh, who's the CEO of Y Combinator. Uh, So, you know, we've been talking to him for a while when we first moved to the Bay Area in 2014. And he kept talking to us about Y Combinator. Uh, and we, we discovered Y Combinator when we were in um, Atlanta. Um, and we knew that in order to start a multi-billion dollar company, we needed to know how to code and mm-hmm. talk to users. And so my co-founders decided to be the coders. I was going to be the talk to users guy, but we didn't know what kind of the CEO, but we didn't know 
what kind of um, company we wanted to start. And every time we would meet with Michael, you know, and he asked us, you know, are you ready to start a company or a business? We would tell him that we had the podcast and then he would ask us, have you, have you quit your job yet? And we would say no. And then he said, you were not ready. And so let me know when you quit your job. And after that happened several times, um, we decided to quit our job and to build something that's like not a media company, but a, a career navigation platform that leverages the media to reach the right audience and to, that really has uh, distribution on lock. Um, leveraging the things that we had learned before and that's that was the seed of of what we have today cool yeah because it's not a media company but it it, it was kind of burst out of that and, and continues those themes uh one of the que- I, I asked people like hey what should i ask ruben when i when i get to talk to him one of the questions was how how does career karma let me get it so i get it right exactly but your content works yeah without doing a bunch of different gimmicks and like having um having a it doesn't seem like it has a ton of uh, brand spin on it or whatever. How, how do you all go through that process to create these, whether it be the show episodes or now the, the conversations in your platform, um, to just make them relevant and organic? Is there, is there a process you go through? Is it just, just who you guys are or what does that look like? Yeah, I think, um, it's a few things. I think, um, simplicity is complexly resolved. And so if you hear, the message that we've communicated pretty much every year and even before career combo was a thing it's the same story um mm-hmm. not, there's like little changes but like for the most part it's a very clear focus message without distractions so that people understand what's going on they may not understand it in the beginning but eventually like they go, like, oh wow he's been talking about that for years um so that's important to like do that. The other thing is to recognize that like people outside of tech don't understand tech jargon. Mm-hmm. So you have to really understand the language, right? So, and how to bridge both worlds. So for example, um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, there's a, a, a rapper uh, named Gunna who just became number one um, beating um, the weekend's album. For some people mm-hmm. that are from Atlanta, they know who Gunna is. Most people, I would argue, don't know who Gunna is. Um, but Gunna has this new term that he's using called P that you've probably seen me post a lot um, mm-hmm. and pushing P, uh, which is short for player, but can be used in different ways when you push it a little bit, when you refer to things like purpose or power or priorities or or plans. And so when I'm talking about things that like my executive coach is teaching me, I'll talk about things using the letter P um, mm-hmm. that our people lo- will understand, but people in tech may not understand. Just like how uh, I'll say breaking into tech without code switching, that's P, right? What does that mean? That's like, that's player, that's cool, that's amazing. That's like, you can be yourself in this world without switching it up where a lot of people feel they got to switch up to in order to fit in but what i tell people is like Mm -hmm. i don't want to fit in but i'm still here like not fitting in is actually like what you want to be that's how you become contrarian and create those outsized returns and that's what gives value to these organizations that that you're going to be joining so i think that that's part of the magic to our message is that we're not catering or trying to sound right Mm-hmm. we're trying to we're just speaking truth to power and showing people that you can speak truth to power too yeah it seems like historically the model has been like this is what it looks like and so you know you go to school to learn that thing but you also go to school to learn how to act to be able to do that thing and and what you all are doing is saying you can look like whatever you look like or sound like however you sound like and then here's how to do the thing, the mm-hmm. the, the work or the task, uh, right. rather than trying to play the the character. That's cool. What about you, just personally? How do you balance, you know, CEO of a, of a successful company? Now, I'm sure that brings a lot of uh, 
attachments or, or obstacles or whatever job, just uh, responsibilities. Um, but you're still out there creating a lot of content, probably, you know, kind of leading content for, for the career of karma from how do you, how do you, how do you balance those two roles? It's a good question. Um, it doesn't come without sacrifice, right? Because I recognize that what I do in my personal life will affect the company, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what you do, um, you just have to always think twice and be like, you know, if I do this in my personal life, will it affect the organization? Mm -hmm. And if it does affect the organization, is it a good thing or a bad thing, right? Um, as chief storyteller, which part of the responsibility of CEO is to tell the story of the company. Um, and as um, someone that recognizes that every tech company is a media company, you know, part of the reason why these VCs like Andreessen and, and others are getting serious first round and others are getting serious about their content games because, you know, that's, that's how they're going to be set apart, how they're going to be visible to, to others. And, um, you know, every company is starting to evolve to figure out how they can be more relatable to their people. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I, I do need to figure out how to balance personal and professional because I am kind of a workaholic and the only thing I really do outside of work is exercise or some type of extreme activity. Um, or I watch anime a lot <laughs> and, um, and just like do things that just like are, can feed my mind that I can create analogies to. Um, mm. and, and, then, and then also like I do music cause I, I've been doing cello and then I'll, I like, um, I like things like jujitsu, but to, I've, as I'm speaking about this, everything is more like active rest where my mind is still thinking about career karma all the time. Um, mm -hmm. As someone that grew up in the church, that's Adventist and, uh, and Sunday Friday, Sunday on Saturday is religious time for me, a time to reflect on God and friends and family. That's a good time where I'm supposed to shut my brain off. But to be perfectly honest, I don't always shut my brain off on yeah. the Sabbath and I'm thinking about how to do the Lord's work now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's tough. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. I've gone through similar things. I'm not nearly as busy. I don't think is, is what you uh, are. And the idea of Sabbath is, I think everyone is like at a core level attracted to it. It's uh, there's something about just rest and peace and all those things. And then, you know, the text comes in or the tweet uh, does well or uh, whatever the opportunity comes through and, and you, you have to react to it. So um, I, I totally get that. Uh, you, you talked about that everything affects you personally. And so there's a negative side of that, but I, I would hope there's a positive side to that. Like if, when, when the company gets $40 million wired to it, like, did you, is there any special, uh, celebration purchase that you made or anything thing that you could do like that? I guess it's maybe some of your trips. Um, look, I still got the same hoodie on. I got the same <laughs> beast mode shorts from Marshall and store that I had on from the beginning. Um, I'm actually like moving out of this apartment, um, at the end of this month in San Francisco and I'm moving to Florida, but like, I'm actually in the process of like getting rid of most of my material things and going mm -hmm. more like on a digital nomad type of thing, just like using mm -hmm. a, um, using a, I'll just use another religious analogy. If you think about spreading the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. You don't do it by sitting in like a really fancy place. You go from town to town. And I'm like, I'm taking more of that type of approach where like, mm. hey, have you heard the good news? You actually don't have to do these things. You can actually pursue this route and you can like change your life, like that type of thing. And right. I don't want this to get confused where like I'm talking about career comes religion. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm just saying no, I, I, I learned a lot of things around like ignore For religion. Sure. Think about the best organizers. We just came out of Martin Luther King weekend. What did Dr. Martin Luther King do? He didn't stay at Ebenezer Baptist Church. He literally went. If you look at his work schedule, it was insane. Same thing with Doc, uh, with Malcolm X. He would go from place to place. All the biggest organizers and leaders would have to, even a pre president, or, they literally go from city to city, town to town, mm -hmm. shaking hands, kissing babies. All right. So I have to take that approach. Um, have I got things that I like? 
yeah, I got some new running shoes. I got some cool workout equipment. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I got to, I got to build up some new muscles to to carry this new weight and take the comfort <laughs> level. You know? On that itinerant, yeah, mm-hmm. itinerant speaker uh, schedule. All right, last question for you. Twenty twenty two, obviously, kind of starting off with a bang from from your perspective. But what what has you most excited? What, like, what are you looking forward to? And why is that answer uh, running a thousand miles as part of this Strava Club? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, I like um, I like that we started off this year in a way where we've got people's attention now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the press run that we did uh, announcing the Series B was a home run uh, because the message wasn't you raised $40 million. It was like, look at who you raised from. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not just using boot camps. You're working with higher education now. You're figuring out how to work with corporations. So not only can they pay for education, but they work with any education institution to legitimize them, right? Because yeah. like, if if you have corporations on board that can not only fund tuition, but also bless any school with a job outcome, that's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and And I think... Um, most importantly for them to know that like we're, that we're, um, growing the team to, to, and that we're not going anywhere, that we have a war chest to really become a player that just doesn't want to get acquired. Like we really want to solve this problem, become the biggest player in the game. I think that, I think that was a home run from a messaging perspective, just, just by the questions that you're asking me, which I like a lot, um, related to the a thousand mile club for the people that don't know, (laughs) Uh, last year, you know, I was able to run over 500 miles, which at during the beginning of the pandemic, I could barely run half a mile. And I tweeted out this year that I want to double it and I want to do a thousand miles, which turned into, you know, a bunch of people creating a whole club that I'm now the de facto leader of. Um, <laughs> and I have to run a thousand miles. Um, yeah. And what's cool about it is that you know, in tech, a lot of people talk about marathon mindset, right? Um, and the marathon continues RIP Nipsey Hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, but how many people have really run a marathon? Right. So the the whole reason why I started running was like I want to see what it feels like to run a marathon. And now that I've yeah. done that multiple times, um, I want to like continue that. And there's a lot of I, like running to me is kind of like moving meditation, um, where right. I get a lot of time to think. Um, and that active rest that I was telling you about. Um, and, you know, if I'm, and I need to take with the series B, there's a lot of analogies where, you know, there's a cool side where we raise all of these resources to help people, but the stakes are higher, right? So it's not, it's not time to play games and just splurge and go crazy. It's time to like put that capital to work to help more people. And so, you know, if I'm, doing that from a business perspective i need to do it from a personal perspective a lot of people think that you know their health goes to waste whenever they are running a business mm-hmm. but i want to prove mm-hmm. that you know the opposite by taking care of your body your mind your spirit and your emotions that makes you a better leader a better ceo better executive better operator better job searcher better worker better husband wife family man whatever so love that yeah yep well i just got the notification right before we jumped on that uh that the uh running in public episode you do with chacho Mm -hmm. that we produce is uh is getting ready so that that's live by now go check it out if you're listening and uh ruben appreciate everything you're doing i appreciate all the people that you're serving and the way you're doing it and uh where i'm sure everyone knows but where can people find you if they want to check out what you're what you got going on Thank you, man. Um, if you have really enjoyed uh, this episode with my brother Adam and you want to take the step to break into tech, I will go to careercomedy.com slash apply. Um, that's our, our best recommendations for schools for you and career paths, even if you're not sure. If you want to uh, talk to me directly in our live audio rooms, you can go to careercomedy.com slash events. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, my Twitter name is at Ruben Harris, R-U-B-E-N-H-A-R-R-I-S. And if you want to email me directly, it's just R-U-B-E-N at careercarmo.com. Cool. 
appreciate it, brother. All right, man. Thank you.